colors change with time and change of heart. If I hold on. Friends we've made. I don't want to let go. After everything. If I hold on to the memories and use them to guide me, will you be right here beside me? Everything I know is behind me. I'm starting a new life. I just don't want
tomorrow like we think about now? Can we survive it out there? Can we make it somehow? I guess I thought that this would never end. And suddenly it's like the women and men. Will the past be a shadow that will follow us around? And will these memories fade when I leave this town? I keep, keep thinking that it's not goodbye. I keep on thinking it's a time to fly. I wish I could stop time So I can treasure this moment It's mine All those years Filled with blood, sweat and tears All the time I put in it It was worth my The sacrifice I've made And when I think about The price I had to pay I cry tears of joy Cause now it's all behind That's why this means so much to me This moment, this time Yeah. 
so big and everything seems so out of reach the sky is high and the walk is wide you just don't know what you've got yet it's in the palm of your hands it's right in front of where so big and everything seems so out of reach the sky is high and the walk is wide you just don't know what you've got yet it's in the palm of your hands it's right in front of where Stand if you believe everything you dream will come true. And if you can love, no matter how you hurt, love will come to you. Back to you, this world is yours. There's 
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the hooding, pinning, and commencement ceremony for the Doctor of Physical Therapy class of 2018. I am, yeah. I am Ann Golub Victor, Interim Associate Chair of the Department of Physical Therapy, Movement and Rehabilitation Sciences, and I am absolutely honored to be your Mistress of Ceremony this afternoon. Graduates, today is a time to celebrate and reflect on all the places you've gone and all the places you go. To quote one of the most influential writers of our time, Dr. Seuss, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Yet it was just a few short years ago that you began your journey at Northeastern with your first semester in the professional phase of the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Reflect back on what you knew or didn't know back then. During that spring, you investigated research design and application of statistical analysis. You delved into the essential skills associated with patient care such as communication and cultural sensitivity, and you learn the important difference between your gluteus maximus and your olecranon process. <laughs> you probably could not quite imagine arriving to this day having completed close to 200 credit hours and over 3,000 contact hours of didactic and clinical education. You should feel exhausted, <laughs> but also exhilarated. Of course, you didn't go through this on your own. You had a village to guide and support you, your faculty, staff, advisors, and loved ones. First and foremost are your family and friends, those who are with you today and in spirit. Class of 2018, please rise, face your family and friends, and honor them with a heartfelt round of applause. Other members of that village are your faculty and advisors. You put your trust in us to nurture you, guide you, and occasionally give that gentle nudge to help you remain steadfast and dedicated in your pursuits. We did this because we saw the potential in each and every one of you to become the caring and compassionate healthcare providers you are today. We knew that if you put in the hard, hard work, asked questions no matter how basic, and discovered those answers, you would achieve your goals. The faculty and advisors here today played a critical role in your education and are honored to have been part of your journey. There are two people who warrant special acknowledgement. Erin Durkin, former advisor for the class of 2018, I know she holds a special place in your heart, and Dr. Christine Letzeiser, who was your link to the college from undergraduate admissions for those undergrads to today's wonderful achievement. Aaron and Chris, please stand up and be acknowledged. And now all faculty and advisors, please rise. And class, please provide a round of applause to thank them for all, they've for all they have done to prepare you for this moment. Now it is my pleasure to, to invite Dr. Kristen Curry Greenwood, the interim chair of the Department of Physical Therapy, Movement and Rehabilitation Sciences, to the podium. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I have the distinct pleasure to speak on behalf of the faculty and advisors and staff from the department. It's this great pleasure to speak with you today as Northeastern University Doctor of Physical Therapy graduates, class of 2018. In thinking about what words I wanted to share with you for what may be the final time, with consideration that as you students know and faculty know, I can be a bit of an over-communicator. I thought, 
because I, as well as the collective faculty on this stage, have spoken about so many things. Together, we've had the pleasure to teach and more importantly, learn alongside each and every one of you, because all of us are always learning. And for this reason, there's so many things to speak about. I decided I want to speak about what happens next. While today meant marks a tremendous occasion and a milestone, several others will speak about that today. I want to talk about tomorrow, because tomorrow is equally important. Your tomorrow, your day one after graduation, and day two, and day three, and so forth. Each day as you move forward to your licensure exam, your job acceptances, and your first day of work. Some of you may have a really clear picture of what that is, or at least your tomorrow for the near future. Some of you may have no idea at all. What you all do have is the privilege of working in a job with abundant opportunities right now. The majority of you will receive several job offers if you haven't already. And the majority of you will be thinking throughout this process, do I feel ready? You may or you may not feel ready. You may feel like the doctor of physical therapy you are, or you may not yet. However, each of you will in time, some sooner than others. This uncertainness is part of the wonder of being a professional, achieving your goals and acting on them. Each day you will learn, for each day we all strive to be lifelong learners, to meet new challenges, not because we are 100% prepared, but because we strive to be. I was recently reminded of a quote which is debated to be from Buddha when watching the movie A Wrinkle in Time with my daughter. The feet feel the feet when they touch the ground. I was completely taken aback by the reminder of this quote, for no one can possibly know what you're supposed to do until you start doing it. So when you don't feel ready, or when you don't feel like a physical therapist, or feel accomplished yet, just know you will over time, because so many things you have previously accomplished that you thought were so difficult are now seeming so easy. Finally, when this quote may not meet all your questions, or when more is needed, I'd encourage you to think about the following quote attributed to Anonymous that I use every day. They believed they could, so they did. Committing to something, challenging yourself, is what life is all about. And we cannot wait to hear about each and every one of your accomplishments, and many, many of them. Continue to contact us, update us on what you're doing, and as always, we're always here when you have questions. Although you won't need us as much as you think you do, for many of the times you already have all of the answers you need. Congratulations on your accomplishments today, and congratulations on accepting the challenge for tomorrow. We are all very, very happy for you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dean Susan Parrish. Dean Parrish earned her doctorate in public health at the University of Illinois at Chicago, her master's of social work, and her bachelor's in English literature at Rutgers University. She completed a two-year postdoctoral research fellowship at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, funded by the National Institutes of Health. Prior to her leadership here at Northeastern, Dean Par Parrish was a faculty member of the School of Social Work, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and was the inaugural Nancy Lurie Marks Endowed Professor of Disability Policy and Director for the Lurie Institute for Disability Policy at the Heller School for Social Policy Management at Brandeis University. Her research examines the health and financial well-being of children and adults with disabilities and their caregiving families. Please join me in welcoming Dean Parrish to the stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. As Dean of the Bouvet College of Health Sciences, it is such a pleasure for me to be here and to add my voice congratulating you graduates welcoming you to today, such a special, important day. And as you think back on this day, I hope you will remember not just the speeches, but I hope you'll remember the love and support of everyone in this room who cares so deeply about you, including my faculty and staff colleagues, as well as your families and friends. These are the folks in addition to all your hard work, who made it possible for you to come to this moment. 
And so just take a second to think about how we all owe the people in our lives so much who help us to do what you've done to earn your doctorate. And now you can force everyone in the world to call you doctor. I really encourage this, I really do. <laughs> I am so proud to be part of Bouvet and, and have a bit of a role in our physical therapy program because we have incredible faculty and staff who work hard every single day to make sure that you have an exceptional experience with us. And I know that that's what you've had. And because you've had such great experiences, because you have worked harder than you ever thought any human could, I know, I've seen you and Baracus doing it. Um, we know that today marks the beginning of incredible opportunities. And who knows where you'll go? And for that, I congratulate you. And I thank you for letting me be part of this. Thank you, Dean Parrish. It's my distinct privilege to introduce your keynote speaker, Ms. Priscilla Osborne, a graduate of our program and accomplished clinician. Ms. Osborne was a physical therapist in the physical therapy and occupational therapy department at Boston Children's Hospital for many years and the director of the physical therapy training and acting training director in the hospital's LEND program. This program is an interdisciplinary program in leadership education in neurodevelopmental and related disabilities. Over her 45 years at Boston Children's Hospital, she practiced in a variety of settings, including acute care, neonatal intensive care, outpatient care, and interdisciplinary teams. Through her responsibilities, Ms. Osborne taught many courses within the hospital and the area colleges and universities addressing issues in and the assessment of treatment in children with neurodevelopmental disabilities. As LEN faculty, she held positions on two committees through the Massachusetts Department of Public Health that addressed the care of children with developmental disabilities in the community. After retirement from Boston Children's Hospital, Ms. Osborne continued to provide physical therapy services to children and families in her community through the local early intervention program. Currently, she serves on the ARC of Greater Plymouth's Human Rights Committee. Ms. Osborne has been a member of the American Physical Therapy Association, an Academy of Physical Therapy, Pediatric Physical Therapy, and has served on committees at the state and national level. She was a board certified specialist in pediatric physical therapy for 20 years. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Osborne to the podium. <laughs> Get this down a little bit. Well, Congratulations on your graduation. Welcome to the field of physical therapy. This is truly a day to celebrate. I would like to thank both Dr. Greenwood and Dr. Golub Victor for inviting me here to speak with you today. It's such an honor. My job as the keynote speaker is to give you some pointers that will help you be successful and happy in your new jobs. These tips come from my experience, so there will be personal stories to illustrate my points along the way. I will make four points that were important to me in my career and that I would like to share with you. Number one, take the joy. This is taken from a letter written in 1513 by Fra Giovanni to a friend. There is nothing that I cannot give which you have not got. But there is much that while I cannot give it, t you can take. Take joy. Soon you will be embarking on a new job in your chosen field. You've worked very hard to get to this point in your lives. Starting your new job will be exciting. Everything will be new, including your role as a physical therapist. There will be new people, new responsibilities, and new situations. You've learned many, many things over these past years in school, but most of all, you have learned the process for solving problems. Remember this as you meet all these new responsibilities. You have the capacity to take on these new situations and solve these new problems. It will be challenging, but accept the challenge and find the joy in learning in this new profession you are joining. 
You will always be learning, no matter how long you practice. There is always something new. Remember to explore and be open to new experiences and areas of practice. As a relatively new physical therapist, I was assigned to work on the cardiopulmonary service. I was interested in working with children with neurodevelopmental issues and not so much cardiorespiratory problems. With the support and guidance of my then supervisor, I was able to see the challenges and enjoy the learning opportunities this new area presented to me. I could see that children with chronic cardiopulmonary health issues were just children working hard to gain those developmental skills that came so easily to those who weren't so ill. Conversely, I understood that what I was learning in this new area would carry over to many other areas of practice as well. There was so much more to this area of practice than what I initially thought. Working closely with the medical staff, I was able to see different visions for my services. The children and family were fantastic, even though they were often facing chronic significant health issues and even end-of-life issues. They gave me so much more in return for any of the time I spent with them. I am now grateful for the guidance to stay, learn, and embrace this new area. So my advice when encountering new situations is to take advantage of the learning opportunity, fully explore the options, give it your best, enjoy the learning, and especially with the relationships with the clients and staffs. Take joy. However, if after a good try, there is no joy, then explore other options. This is a quote from Steve Jobs. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. Physical therapy is a broad and varied profession. There are many career paths within it. It's important to keep aware of opportunities to move into an area that really interests you. Take those opportunities as they arise. Search them out and move yourself into a direction that really makes you feel joyful. Number two, this is a profession of working with people. Take joy in the people. Build a respectful, collaborative, professional relationship with your clients. As a physical therapist, you are in the unique position of being someone who is there to help others. You may be able to ease some pain, help somebody walk, retire. In doing this, you will be spending time with your clients, perhaps more time than most other health professionals. You will hear their stories and learn about them. This client-professional relationship is both a privilege and a responsibility. A privilege to be part of their lives and a responsibility to do it in a respectful, collaborative, professional manner. This includes honoring his or her differences, recognizing their strengths and building on them, sharing information, collaborating with them, empowering them to make choices and decisions in their care. To do this, you get to have to get to know each client, and sometimes their family. You need to listen carefully and ask the questions to get to know their goals for, their, for your services, as well as their interests and motivations. Have them join you in setting up both goals and programs. As you get to know them, the partnership will evolve. Build that relationship on respect, honor, and trust. Let me tell you a story to illustrate this point. I had a small private practice in my community and was referred a 10-year-old boy who had a stroke at the age of five. He had begun tripping over his foot, which made his walking unsteady. Billy had not had any rehabilitation services since his stroke, and his family had been managing on their own. I arrived at the home. Billy was not particularly interested in my services. 
He had some tricks of his own that he used to manage his movement issues and thought my services were going to be a waste of his time. He would prefer to spend that time learning to play street hockey. As I spent time with both Billy and his parents, I came up with some concerns that I might be able to help out with. It was very important for Billy to learn to play street hockey with his friends. He was tripping and falling when he was playing hockey, and this embarrassed him. Together, Billy and I were able to come up with some goals that would help him fall less when he was playing hockey, and this carried over to his walking. I became Billy's coach, and Billy became very motivated to work with me because he could see improvement in his game. This built trust between us, and he was able to tell me about other motor issues that he was having that I might be able to help out with. We became good partners and worked together for another 10 years. It worked for both of us to form that partnership. Number three, no need to go it alone. You've been in a learning environment essentially all of your life until today. There's no need to leave this behind as you leave school. As you get to know your work environment and have developed your interest, seek out an experienced professional in your area of interest and ask them to become your mentor. But remember, mentorship is a two-way street and you will also have to work with your mentor to earn his or her time and energy. Speaking as a mentor, this relationship can have tremendous rewards for the mentor as well. I've been fortunate enough to have two great mentors in my professional life. These have been other physical therapists with common interests who at the time we began this mentorship relationship were my supervisors. They took the time to get to know me and give me their expertise and advice. In return, I helped out with their work both in the clinic and in research. It was a win-win situation. I helped them a bit with my work and they were able to teach me as much as I could learn about their respective areas of expertise. When I was at a critical point in my career, choosing a path to go forward, my first mentor took the time to sit with me and help me move in a pathway that would best suit my interests. Under her guidance, I became involved in teaching students both in the clinic and in the classroom. This activity has been very fulfilling and added immeasurably joy to my life. My other mentor was the first person to take me to a National American Physical Therapy Association conference. At the conference, she brought me to meetings and introduced me to nationally known physical therapists in pediatrics. At one point, my mentor and I were having dinner with five other nationally known pediatric physical therapists. I was in awe. However, it did teach me how important it was to get to know people and learn from them, networking. Involvement in the physical American Physical Therapy Association at both the state and national level have provided me with resources, training activities, mentorship and leadership opportunities. As part of the leadership group, of the Academy of Pediatrics, I was able to influence the direction of my profession. Quite an honor. The American Physical Therapy Association is an important resource, and I'm going to encourage you to keep that in mind. There are state and national educational meetings, special interest groups, and a national mentorship program, just to name a few of the resources that will be available to you as a new professional. Meetings both local and national, are a good way to network and learn. But as you, excuse me, the journals are very valuable. I know it's a financial commitment, but as you are able, it will return your investment many times over. Number four, compassion and kindness. Often just being understanding of the situation is the most important part of treatment. Compassion and kindness are very much a part of caring. These attributes need to be an integral part of providing your service. 
So on this, on this graduation day, congratulations. Take joy in your new career. Partner with your clients to build a trusting, collaborative relationship. Find a mentor or two to help you along the way and be compassionate and kind. Take joy in the challenges, the learning, the helping, and the giving of our profession. Thank you. Over the course of your DPT program, whoops, I'm a little, only a little taller. Um, over the course of your DPT program, you have spent days, weeks, months in the classroom and in labs learning everything from palpation to manipulation and PNF. You were together all the time, learning what it takes to be an entry level physical therapist. You got to know each other very, very well, perhaps more than either you cared to or ever imagined, or perhaps both. Each class has its unique qualities, memories, and experiences. To represent you, the collective student voice, I invite your elected student speaker, Rachel Ungendiren, to the podium. Good afternoon. Greetings friends, family, faculty, staff, alumni, and the notoriously fun class of 2018. What a beautiful, warm day it is. It appears that some of you treated yourselves this past month. New outfits, new tans, new cultural experiences under your belt, new spouses. I'm looking at you, Christine. Congratulations. <laughs> not too shabby. It, would all, it was all well deserved. Before I continue, I would like to thank Dr. Gala Victor for such a warm introduction. I would also like to thank my classmates for bestowing this honor upon me. With open arms, I welcomed the added stress and anxiety <laughs> while a handful of you were vacationing in faraway lands. <laughs> the sleepless nights when a good number of you took the opportunity to catch up on sleep and less time with my friends and family while the majority of you were making beautiful memories with yours. I thank you. Now all jokes aside, I am truly honored to stand here before you all this afternoon, having the opportunity to give this address on such a pivotal, monumental day is truly a blessing. Northeastern University DPT class of 2018, we made it. We made it through the apocalyptic winter of 2015. We made it through gross anatomy and the year of Professor Nippins. No offense. <laughs> we made it through summer of 2015. Yeah, the one where we suffered from chronic malaise. And I suffered from benign fasciculation syndrome of my left eye. In other words, a muscle twitch. We made it through co-op and we made it through those stress-ridden practicals. Sorry. I need to take a second here. Do y'all remember those gross anatomy practicals? They expected us to accurately palpate a stranger's anterior tibialis, rectus femoris, or sternocleidomastoid? I mean, SMH. <laughs> but we did it. Kudos to us. We made it through the long lines at Rebecca's Cafe in the little time between our first and second class. We made it through sleepless nights in Club Snow. Fret not, mom and dad. No, I was not spending my nights clubbing. It's our nickname for the library. Good golly, we made it. Back in my day, before the boom of the technological age, commencement speakers would simply go to a dictionary and look up words associated with graduation, such as commence, embark, 
or beginning and use the definition as the foundation of their speech. However, with the advancement of social media in conjunction with the capabilities of today's youth, I found myself watching clips of commencement speeches on Instagram and then proceeding to search for the full version on YouTube. With autoplay enabled, I found myself watching countless hours of speeches. There were high school graduation speeches, college commencement speeches, some were thought provoking, others funny. One in particular that stuck with me was a Harvard graduate who performed spoken word as his speech, and man, did he deliver. I contemplated DMing him and having him be my ghostwriter for today's occasion. <laughs> but just as I was sliding in, I happened upon an Instagram video of a little girl reciting positive affirmations. I know many of you all are familiar with it and probably tagged your squad in the comments section many a time before exams and practicals when morale was low. I watched her go through one round and joined her during the second loop. I am strong. I am smart. I am respectful. I am amazing. I am great. It was at that moment that I deleted my draft to Donovan Livingston at DLive87, <laughs> and I began to construct what I thought to be an original commencement address. So here it goes. Growing up, being the youngest of all my cousins, I never really accepted my role as the baby of the family. When we played house, I aspired to be the mom of the group. When we played school, the role of the teacher was what I sought after. However, when we played Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I was always the green one. Woo hoo. When we tried our hand at singing and pretended to be NSYNC, I was Chris Kirkpatrick. Exactly. <laughs> I was never allowed first pick. My role was always predetermined. I yearned to be one of the big kids. To me, this meant engaging in activities that were suited for kids two to four years my senior. Most notably, animated movies were not for me. Of course, I watched the classics, Lion King, Aladdin, Toy Story. However, the list pretty much stopped there. I was into more age appropriate, make you contemplate life type movies, such as 13 Going on 30, <laughs> 27 Dresses, 10 Things I Hate About You, My Best Friend's Wedding, real gems, I know. I think back to Integ Lab, where Dr. Watkins showed us a clip from Monsters, Inc., and asked by a show of hands who had never seen the movie. Without any hesitation, I shot my hand up, to which I was royally judged. <laughs> Although I cannot tell you that I've watched Monsters, Inc., I can tell you that I have doubled the amount of animated movies I've watched thanks to my brother's kindergarten class, my baby cousin, and my most recent clinical at Texas Children's Hospital. As you all know, this profession requires that we engage in conversation with our patients, and in my case, do a lot of research outside of clinical practice guidelines and best treatment approaches. Believe it or not, I am not the most vocal individual you'll ever meet. In high school, I was in the running for the talks least says the most superlative. I am not one who has an endless supply of information to retrieve during patient treatment sessions. I am not the girl you want on your team at trivia night. During game nights, if cranium is in the mix, you can count me out. Thus, the hardest part of the job for me, what makes me really nervous and requires I apply some extra clinical strength secret deodorant, is the small talk. <laughs> for my first two clinicals, I relied heavily on NPR and ESPN to get me through. My last clinical had me all over the place. A sprinkle of ESPN, a pinch of NPR, a little of this, a bit of that, but most importantly, a heaping portion of Disney, nursery rhymes, and Pixar. I mean, really, the amount of times I sang the wheels on the bus over that 14-week period was uncanny. Between Sophia the First, Frozen, Trolls, Moana, and Zootopia, with a little of Thomas the Tank Engine, I had my work cut out for me. Not only did I have to be able to pick the characters out of a lineup and know their role in the movie, but I also had to know the course of the song associated with the movie. Therefore, along with studying handling for progression of developmental milestones, 
maintaining precautions, and creating engaging playtime sh sessions, I also had to Netflix all these movies that I had originally written off, secondary to them being childish and beneath me. But Rachel loves the kids. So watching at least one animated movie or show every weekend became my thing during CE3. I must admit, the cinematic technique, the soundtracks, and the messages associated with these movies were noteworthy. I now see why adults and kids alike are enchanted by this type of film. The kids I worked with were more interested in the theatrics, the songs, the pretty outfits, and the silly sidekicks. However, the movies were much more than that. Many of them have such profound messages, messages that most of the kids were too young to comprehend. Thus, I was unable to discuss them. Although I delighted in being able to sing a tune or two on repeat throughout our sessions, differentiate between Anna and Elsa in a lineup, and understand how little Moana of Motunui can keep both my 18-month-old niece and my girl Lindsay O'Neill engaged, <laughs> I felt that I needed to discuss the movie's takeaway points with someone. Congratulations! You all are the lucky someone. To the Northeastern DPT graduating class of 2018, I challenge you to, one, live your truth. Zootopia's officer, Judy Hopps, helped me arrive at this idea, and it was one that I personally needed to hear. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the storyline, Officer Hopps was a bunny that graduated top of her class in the police academy and was the first of her kind to be hired on the police force. She taught me that it is okay to deviate from what is expected. I came into this program thinking that I was going to graduate and work in an outpatient orthopedic clinic specializing in sports PT. For the past 17 years, sports have defined me, and it was no surprise to anyone who knows me that I was going to be a sports physical therapist. Unbeknownst to me, I would thoroughly enjoy my inpatient co-op at Boston Medical Center, particularly my time spent assisting patients in the intensive care unit. However, I was still hesitant to give up on sports PT. What would people think, I pondered. Regardless, my inpatient clinical spent at Texas Children's Hospital helped solidify that the inpatient setting was my calling, and more specifically, the pediatric population. As new graduates, we are not specialized. We have just finished a program that is sending us into the workforce as general practitioners. Physical therapists are able to work in a variety of settings. Don't feel pressured to fit a mold. Do not feel as though you are expected to work in the setting that introduced you to PT if that is not where your passion lies. Use this time to experiment. Apply for different settings if you're unsure. Treat it as another clinical, only we're actually getting paid for our services. <laughs> yes, there is comfort and familiarity and safety, but this is our time to be curious and explore. Two. Never forget the impact of your inner circle. We did not get to this point in time by ourselves. I know that I personally would have missed assignments, slept through an exam or two, and had many tearful nights if it was not for the help of the girls in the group chat. Members of Functional Dysfunction, formerly known as the Nerd Herd, I thank and I love each and every one of you. Class, I urge you all to remember those members of your group chat or that friend who you always studied with. Do not think of today as a goodbye, but rejoice in knowing that you are not the only one who is embarking on this new adventure. We are no longer going to be characterized as our entrance year, undergrads versus postbacs. We will forever be remembered as the graduating class of 2018. Remember those people who stayed with you and encouraged you during late nights and early mornings in the library those friends who tagged you in confidence-boosting memes when you were at your low, those friends who were there to amp you up before practicals, and those friends who lent a shoulder or an ear when it felt like your whole world was crumbling down. Princess Poppy was able to provide this message to me with a little help from her boy, Branch. During our first year in the workforce, maybe even longer, we may experience moments of defeat and periods of sadness thinking we are ill-equipped. When you are out studying for the boards and in the beginning days to months of your first job, remember that there are 87 people who you can turn to, 87 people who are on that same trajectory. Princess Poppy in Trolls teaches us that happiness isn't something you put inside. It's already there, and sometimes you need someone to help you find it. Members of 
future doctors, nerd herd, PTs, welcome to Disneyland, and all the names listed in nameless group chats are there to help you find it. QJTs, I got this feeling. <laughs> Three, remain curious, inquisitive, and yearn for knowledge. Stay youthful. By that I mean continue to ask why. Continue to educate yourself by attending CEUs, in services, state and national chapter meetings, and complete literature reviews often in order to ensure that you are providing the best practice. We work in an ever-changing field, one that requires that we seek out additional knowledge in order to sharpen the tools our Northeastern education has provided us. Yes, we made it, but our work is not yet complete. In the movie Frozen, you know the one, let it go, let it go can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> in the movie Frozen, instead of choosing to learn how to properly utilize her powers, young Elsa concealed her magic and secluded herself from the people of Andrell. She became more and more insecure with each passing day. It wasn't until she learned to effectively use her powers that she believed she could return to her kingdom and live amongst the people without unintentionally harming anyone. As newly minted physical therapists, it is our responsibility to continue to seek out educational opportunities in order to hone in on our skills. We do not want to keep our patients from receiving the best care because of our own insecurities. In order to exude warranted confidence, the skills must first be mastered. Continue to practice. Ask questions. Do not be embarrassed to do so. We are not expected to know everything. In fact, when you reach that point of thinking you know it all, it's time to change settings or switch careers. Four, be an advocate for your patients, your community, and the profession. Moana of Motunui teaches us the importance of never staying stagnant. The people of Motunui were complacent with how things were. Everyone had a role to fulfill and was happy to just fall in line. From childhood, Moana and her island men were instructed by their parents to never go beyond the reef. However, she was a driven, passionate gal who desired to attempt to explore that place where the line where the sky meets the sea, it called her. And no one knows how far it goes. I said I was able to sing the songs. I didn't say they were sung well. <laughs> Moana was a voyager like her ancestors before her. She did not want to be confined to the island of Motunui. In the end, her curiosity and her courage helped to save the people of Motunui. Be like Moana. Don't join the PT field and fall in line. Be purposefully disruptive. It is important that we are key players in progressing the field. I feel as though Jess Marengo was the Moana of our class. She urged us to board her boat on countless occasions, joining the APTA, attending meetings, and reaching out to our representative. As a student, I was more like demigod Maui. I was guilty of not being as active as I should have been. We owe it to ourselves, our colleagues, our patients, and our profession to get involved. Make your voice heard. Make sure that by the day you retire, the field of physical therapy was edified as a result of you having been a part of it. And lastly, five, be that little girl from the Instagram video. When all else fails and life gets tough, walk in front of the closest mirror or anything that shows your beautiful reflection, take your best power stance, thanks Lauren Sterling for teaching me this one prior to an MS practical, <laughs> and repeat the following, I am strong, I am smart, I am fearless, I am educated, I am capable, I am a 2018 Northeastern Doctor of Physical Therapy graduate and I got this. Thank you.
was awesome. Thank you, Rachel. So, Dave, you have um, pretty big shoes to fill. Um, collectively, the faculty on this stage has influenced you in many different ways, but all as facilitators of your learning. To represent the collective voice of your faculty, I welcome Dr. David Nolan, your choice for faculty speaker, to come to the podium. Thanks, Rachel. Good afternoon, everyone. A warm welcome to the friends and family of the Northeastern University Physical Therapy Class of 2018. I'm truly honored and humbled to have been selected as your faculty speaker. In my opinion, one of the most flattering compliments is when a colleague asks you to treat a family member or be involved with something that's important to them. Being invited to speak today truly means a great deal to me. Thank you. Challenges and triumphs shape who we are. In the years that we've known each other during your DPT journey, there have been many challenges, but there have been and will continue to be far more triumphs. Today is a day to celebrate all your triumphs. I graduated from this program in 1997 and have been teaching at Northeastern in some capacity since 2001. Yes, I realize many of you were still enjoying the thrills of recess at that time. As I reflected on that period and how much I've changed as a person and as a physical therapist, I thought about several things. In particular, I thought about the experiences that have influenced me, as well as the many mentors that have guided me over the years. As I was preparing my remarks for today, I realized that there was so much that I wanted to say, but I knew that I would have a limited amount of time, and I wanted to make sure I held your attention. I thought about how passionate all of you are about evidence-based practice and considered reviewing the literature on attention span and secondary education and the impact on learning. I really didn't have time for that, though. So I thought about what all of you would do. Google says that attention span of the average college student is between 10 and 15 minutes. Initially surprised by that, I quickly did another search to compare various age groups and found the average is four minutes per year in children. In other words, the attention span of a four-year-old is about 16 minutes. I learned from that that we apparently peak very early in life, and I, <laughs> and I needed to keep my, brief, my remarks short today. In class, you've heard me say many times before, learn from my mistakes. Those were teaching moments about occasions that I ultimately did not do what was best for my patient. My goal in those moments has always been to illustrate that we don't always get it right the first time but we need to identify those instances and improve on them. I thought it would be appropriate to offer some unsolicited advice as you transition to the next phase of your exciting careers. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. <laughs> if you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help someone else. That's what we do as physical therapists, help people. No matter what direction you head next, that will continue to be the foundation. Considering our interactions over the past few years, I enter today with two assumptions. Assumption one, since you had elected me to represent the faculty at the podium today, you have some level of interest, while it may be understandably small and short-lived, in what I might have to say. <laughs> Assumption two, you're anticipating at least one story that involves Sophia, Tegan, or both. That will strategically be placed later to assist with a previously identified attention span issue. <clears throat> I worked hard to narrow my focus to three pearls I wanted to share today. These are personal and have come from my own reflection over the years where I've tried to become a better person. My hope is that you'll consider these pearls as you start the next phase of your career, but also within your personal life. Number one, find your passion. My path has been a circuitous one, but the journey is usually where the stories come from, not the destination. I decided early on I wanted to do something in the medical field, but wasn't sure what. When I was a freshman in high school, my younger sister was thrown from a horse and fractured her radius and ulna. She had surgical fixation, started physical therapy soon after. I was able to attend a few of her sessions and was amazed at the remarkable changes in her movement and pain. It seemed like a cool place with nice people, lots of stuff to use, so maybe this was the job for me. 
<clears throat> I was able to volunteer at, in a physical therapy department at a local hospital where I grew up and spend, spend a great deal of time making copies, filing, and cleaning whirlpools. The profession was becoming less sexy by the day until one of the PTs asked if I wanted to observe him working with a patient. During that session, the patient walked in with a significant lip and appeared to be in tremendous pain. The PT rarely made eye contact with the patient and really didn't seem to care much about what the patient had to say. I remember thinking it should be better than this. I could do better than this. Upon graduating, I worked in the inpatient PT service of a large hospital here in Boston. This will be hard for most of you to believe, but initially I wanted to work with patients in acute care, and the sicker the better. The two thuds you just heard were Dr. Nippins and Greenwood falling out of their chairs. <laughs> I was one of the few men in the department and the least experienced clinician on staff. That typically meant a caseload of patients over 300 pounds and every prison inmate that needed care. I also had stints in acute care and subacute rehab and per diem home care therapists as well. It was not until several years into my career that I discovered my passion for orthopedics and sports medicine, but I've never looked back. The point of all that is to figure out what you love to do, no matter how long it takes. Number two, listen more than you speak. We live in a fast-paced world of what can seem like impersonal health care at times. Take pride in honing your active listening skills. We all want people to listen to us, and your patients are no different. If you listen to them, they will tell you what's wrong and help you decide how best to treat them. Listening will make you a better physical therapist for sure, but more importantly, a better husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, or father. I encourage you to consider the opinions and viewpoints that differ from yours and appreciate and respect the perspective of, uh, perspectives of others. Mark Twain may have said it best, if we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues and one ear. Listening, quite simply, is the foundation to success in career and personal relationships. The final pearl is an important one, so it's time for an attention span reset slash story. Okay? About a month ago, we were getting the girls ready for bed. Sophia is seven and Tegan is four. Together they said, Daddy, we need to talk to you. I can't recall that joint effort ever happening before. As they both sat in the bed, Tegan said, Daddy, we want a baby brother. <laughs> My wife gave herself whiplash. She spun her head around so fast. <laughs> Parents in the room will quickly realize that I'm new at this when you hear my response. Not wanting to get into a discussion about babies, I said, is there anything else you want? Almost immediately, the response was, yes, Daddy, a puppy. <laughs> Suddenly, the idea of a dog seemed much more reasonable <laughs> com compared to the thought of a third child. Then I realized I just got worked over by a seven and a four-year-old. <laughs> Clearly, in instance, I should have focused more on listening and less on speaking. I'm still a work in progress. Now that I have everybody's attention again, the third and final pearl. Challenge yourself. Never settle in any aspect of your life. You'll get bored very quickly. Always keep learning. You'll never know everything in the moment you think you have it all figured out. Retire. Richard Terendi, a Northeastern graduate, has said, if you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. Right? Surround yourself with people smarter than you. You'll be happy that you did. Set lofty goals, and when you reach them, set new ones. Remember, if it was easy, everybody would do it. If you don't challenge yourself, you'll miss out on countless opportunities to feel how you feel right now, time and time again. You'll encounter lots of challenges in life. Remember, it's only a failure if you don't learn from the experience. In conclusion, do what you love and most importantly, always make time for the people that you love. I know you will all do great things in physical therapy and in life. And always remember you decide what that means. I want to wish each of you a lifetime of health and happiness. Congratulations and enjoy the day.
Thank you, Dr. Nolan. Throughout your journey in the DPT program, you've encountered extraordinary individuals in the classroom and in the clinic who have imparted their insight and wisdom, modeled professionalism and best practice. This afternoon, we wish to honor two individuals for their significant contributions to our students. At this time, I invite Dr. Eric Fulmar to the podium. As chair of the awards committee for the department, it gives me great pleasure to be able to recognize first our students and all of their amazing accomplishments. Students were recognized at the department, college, and university level, so I'm going to read the award winners from this year's class. I'd like each awardee to rise and remain standing, and just please hold your applause until the end, because there's, there's quite a bit of an accomplishment here. So we'll start with uh, Philip Sheedy from the Boston Bouvet Faculty Scholarship. Jessica Orpin, and the Bouvet College Service Medal. Jessica Marengo and Natalia Reddick, the Bouvet Honor Society. Jessica Marengo, the Catherine L. Allen Award. Victoria San Fiorenzo, the Charles L. Hauenberg Memorial Scholarship. Sonu Gandhi, the Colonel Harry S. Goodman Scholarship. Caitlin Clunan, the Dean's Research Award. Joseph Marullo, the Elizabeth A. Davy Scholarship. Kristen Capuza, the Jane Close Smalley Physical Therapy Scholarship. Melissa Ho, John and Evelyn Neumeyer Scholarship. Samantha Purr, the Mary Florence Stratton Award. Kayla Gomes, Melissa Ho, and Lauren Sterling, the Physical Therapy Alumni Scholarships. And Jessica Marengo, the Sears B. Condent Award for Outstanding Undergraduate Achievement. Congratulations to all of the award winners. All right, so we'll move on to our, our two other awards. So I'd now like to invite Dr. Chris Cesario to the podium to present the Clinical Educator of the Year Award. The Clinical Educator Award is given to physical therapists that have done uh, above and beyond efforts to support the mentorship of our physical therapist students. This year's recipient is David Houle. David is a nurturing clinical instructor who is always enthusiastic to teach his students. As a clinical instructor, he makes time from the first day to outline his expectations to the student, to listen to what their goals are, and to help them accomplish them. During the experience, he seeks out opportunities to provide students with additional learning opportunities, such as wound care rounds or shadowing other healthcare professionals so students can get the most out of the time that they are spending at that experience. He always makes himself available for guidance when needed, and his calm and professional demeanor makes students comfortable in that environment. Students have commented that he's an excellent communicator, he makes them feel at ease, and he does everything in his power to make their learner experience the most meaningful as possible. It's my privilege to present this year's Clinical Educator of the Year to David Houle. the distinct pleasure of awarding the Marguerite Sanderson Award. So this award is awarded to an individual who exemplifies the leadership and creative and diligent qualities which Marguerite Sanderson herself displayed. This award recognizes an individual with ties to Northeastern who has supported our physical therapy students, thereby helping to advance the profession itself. This year it is my honor and privilege to present this award to Aaron Durkin. The class of 2018 was fortunate to work closely with Aaron uh, in student services for majority of their time here at Northeastern. I figured no better way to honor Aaron here today than in the words of the students and faculty that she worked so closely with. Though really there's not enough time to speak to all of her contributions and the impact that she's had on this department. From a student perspective, Aaron was described as a huge source of support. She was a sounding board, a voice of reason, she never judged or criticized. She listened as long as you needed and always knew what to say. 
Several students shared personal stories about Erin, but each ended with the same sentiment. PT school would not have been the same without her. She made getting through this possible. Faculty members all had similar sentiments. Not only was she a source of support for the students, but she was a source of information, a source of objectivity, and really a source of support for the faculty as well. She served as a collaborator on many fronts. She was meticulous uh, in her work, and you could always count on her to give 100% attention to the matter at hand. Perhaps most importantly, she did all of this with a big smile on her face. I will end with two quick student quotes that sum it up pretty well. Erin always had confidence in me. Early on, when I wasn't sure if I had what it takes to make it through the program, she was there for me. She offered unwavering support and encouragement through my Northeastern career. I can't thank her enough for her guidance and kindness. The second one, Erin was encouraging and you truly felt welcomed and supported by her. She was such an important person to have on our side to get through school. Her office door was always open to drop in to celebrate a victory or get through a rough time. She took the time to get to know you and that made a huge difference. Erin, you are certainly missed here at Northeastern, but you have made a lasting impact on those you have advised and those you have worked with. It gives me great pleasure to award this Marguerite Sanderson Award to you. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the conferral of degrees in which you move from student to graduate. I welcome Dr. Greenwood and Dean Parrish to the podium for conferral of degrees. It is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled and others have qualified in all respects for the degrees in course. They have successfully completed curricula offered by the Bouvet College of Health Sciences at Northeastern University and have been recommended by their faculty and the Council of Deans to be awarded appropriate degree in recognition of their academic accomplishments. All candidates, please rise and remain standing until your degrees have been conferred. Dean Parrish, I have the privilege of presenting these candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy. By virtue of the authority of the Northeastern University Board of Trustees, I confer on you and those who have properly qualified the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy according to the cu curriculum which you have qualified with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. What I just said is you're now doctors. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates, please be seated. Okay. Now. Sorry. Oops. Now I'm ready. Sorry about that. The practice of wearing academic regalia dates back to the 12th century, where students were required to wear the robes to all academic events, including class. The length of the robe, the shape of the sleeves, and the stripes on the shoulder were used to differentiate the various grades of scholars. Today, unfortunately, the robes are only worn on special occasions. I know it's very disappointing. The regalia represents your degree and accomplishment as a scholar. The hood represents your doctoral designation. The colors on the hood represent your academic preparation and your new profession. 
Teal represents physical therapy, and the black and red lining represents Northeastern University. The pin you will receive today distinguishes you as a proud Northeastern physical therapy graduate and alumni. We hope you wear your pin with, proud, with honor and pride as you embark on your new journey. Now is the presentation of those pins, hoods, and diplomas. You selected the following individuals to play a special role in today's ceremony. Doctors Des Leslie Day and Matthew Nippins will call each of you to the stage to receive your hood, pin, and diploma. Dr. Sherry Kiami, Maureen Watkins, and Eric Fulmar will place the doctoral hood over your head. Drs. Marie Corkery and Steve Yen will present you with your diplomas and pins. You are marshaled to the stage by Dr. Susan Ventura, Diane Fitzpatrick, and Arlisha Makowski. Dr. Joseph George Adams IV. <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Ann Allen. Dr. Thomas Leslie Onan. <laughs> Dr. Brittany Taylor Ardunga. Dr. Sean Michael Barrett. <laughs> Dr. Erica Ide Billido. Dr. Christina N. Braun. Dr. Sarah L. Burgett. Dr. Todd Eric Burnett, Jr. <laughs> Dr. Laura Rosiano. Dr. Brian Clancy. <laughs> Dr. Caitlin Marie Clunan.
Dr. Elizabeth Claire Cote. Dr. Catherine Ann Crisofoli. <laughs> Dr. Christopher Dano. Dr. Jehi Darianani. <laughs> Dr. Catherine C. Dela Cruz. Dr. Alicia Nicole Dermaro. <laughs> Dr. Kate Elizabeth Dodge. Dr. Margaret Dodman. Dr. Kate McKee Driscoll. Dr. Caitlin Melissa Duffy. <laughs> Dr. Kara Jane Dwyer. Dr. Elizabeth Nicole Flaherty. <laughs> Dr. Richard John Gata. Dr. Jessica Rose Galvez. <laughs> Dr. Sonu H. Gandhi. Dr. Kayla Elizabeth Gomes. <laughs> Dr. Seth Roland Gordon.
Dr. Allison Nicole Grosso. Dr. Kiran Gulamali. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Matthias Haller. Dr. Haig Heratunian. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Elizabeth Hirsch. Dr. Melissa Ho. Dr. Julianne Hubbard. Dr. Samin Hussein. Dr. Christopher Johnson. Dr. Kristen Elizabeth Capuza. <laughs> Dr. Elizabeth Ann Kilsey. Dr. Daniel T. Kim. <laughs> Dr. Marin Kitamura. Dr. Savannah M. Nisley. <laughs> Dr. Eli Frank Lamberson. Dr. Huey P. Lay. <laughs> Dr. Michael Ling. Dr. Amelia R. Lanos. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Shannon E. Mahoney. Dr. Lauren Elizabeth Morella. <laughs> Dr. Jessica M. Marengo. Dr. Lauren Marie Mazzoni. <laughs> Dr. Casey Elizabeth McAvoy. Dr. Kathleen Mercado. <laughs> Dr. Joseph Marulo. Dr. Jordan Scott Metcalf. <laughs> Dr. Lauren Morrison. Dr. Kathleen Elizabeth Murphy. <laughs> Dr. Barry Myers. Dr. Hillary O'Connor. <laughs> Dr. Rachel Abiyami Agundaran. Dr. Meredith Rose O'Hare. <laughs> Dr. Laura Carolyn Olsavsky. Dr. Lindsay Marie O'Neill. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Lynn Orpin. Dr. Abigail R. Owen. <laughs> Dr. Samira Michelle Purr.
Dr. Catherine Alyssa Philbrick. Dr. Edward Pizzo. <laughs> Dr. Carson Jean Potash. Dr. Matthew Barrett Kwan. Dr. Natalia Reddick. Dr. Emily Shea Regan. <laughs> Dr. Courtney Lynn Rorig. Dr. Sophia Reuterberg. <laughs> Dr. Anna Stanislavovna Robakina. Dr. Victoria Senforenzo. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Keebler Schaefer. Dr. Philip Sheedy. Dr. Michaela McGovern Simino. Dr. Christine Marie Snizek Finnegan. Dr. Molly Rebecca Swords. Dr. Lauren J. Sterling. State. Dr. Carly Ann Stote.
Dr. Kevin Michael Troutman. Dr. Christian J. Vanderskyf. <laughs> Dr. Philip S. Van Pelt. Dr. Jeffrey K. Wagner. <laughs> Dr. Jared Patrick Winston. And to complete the 2018 Doctor of Physical Therapy class, Nicola Jane Wolf. How about a round of applause now? So in closing, Dr. Seuss said it best in his 1960, oh, the places you'll go. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it is true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. You're off, or, off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. On behalf of the faculty, we offer our sincere congratulations to the class of 2018 Doctors of Physical Therapy. Another round of applause. Family and friends, please wait until the stage party and graduates exit this auditorium and then join us for a reception in the Curry Student Center. The graduates will be taken for a formal picture of the group and will join us shortly. Graduates, please remain seated until the marshals raise you for the recessional.